Hey everybody, it's Dr. Ron. I just want to talk about why is it that we are our own worst enemies when it comes to um, really chronic disease and uh, how our body really naturally reacts to the things that we put into our body. And there's a concept called autoimmunity that I want to talk to you guys about that's really not addressed a whole lot in the medical community as a whole and probably because it's, it's a bit new and there's a few new concepts that that uh, that it's really difficult to address. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Cheng Ron. I'm an internal medicine physician in Texas, and uh, I want to talk to you about autoimmunity today. So, let's define the word autoimmunity. Auto means um, within one's body uh, with self. And immunity is the immune system. So, um, our own immune system can develop things towards uh, different things that our body sees, right? And some examples of autoimmune disease are like lupus or Sjogren's disease, um, hypothyroidism, um, especially Hashimoto's hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism in some cases. And these are the things that um, a lot of physicians just take granted. Okay, well, you know, your body is reacting the way it reacts and there's not much we can do about it except put you on medicines. But, you know, now looking at the root cause of disease there's plenty of things that we can do for autoimmunity. We just have to understand how it happens. We have to understand why it happens. And we have to understand that there's something that we can do about it. And so, here, and this is exactly how autoimmunity works. So, um, let's say you are exposed to something. Your body is exposed to something. And the most common ways that we expose our body to something foreign is through eating it, or is through breathing it, or is through through, uh, through the skin, right? So the most direct course of action is breathing a substance. Um, but the most uh, modifiable uh, way that we can do something is eat a substance, right? So if we eat a food, and that food goes into our mouth, and the digestion starts, and that food goes into our esophagus, goes into our small bowels, and then our large bowels, and as it gets down there, digestion is supposed to happen. Well, the problem with that is that there's a lot of foods nowadays that our bodies don't recognize. A lot of it's processed foods, um, processed sugars, um, different things that are, a lot of them are man-made. Trans fats are man-made. These man-made things our bodies don't recognize as actual food. And so our bodies develop a reaction towards it. And uh, this can happen with gluten. This can happen with dairy in some in some people, and um, and this can happen with different vegetables and nightshades in some people. And so it's 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 hard to predict unless we listen to our bodies. So as we consume this food, it goes into our body. Um, it can create a level of inflammation, which means that the body sees it as foreign, and uh, and it'll start um, causing inflammation in the gut wall. And that inflammation uh, causes a leakage um, of different material uh, into the lumen. And, uh, and lumen means um, the insides of the colon. And, uh, and that leakage of material uh, continues to perpetuate because once uh, the gut wall is compromised, the body sees the food more. And uh, when the body sees the food, the body starts developing uh, antibodies towards it. And what antibodies are, are, are lines of defense that are reacting towards the food. So this antibody that looks like a little Y, kind of like this, um, goes into our bloodstream and it falsely recognizes some of the uh, other things in our body as foreign. And so, for example, the thyroid is a good example. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and, uh, which is the most common cause of hypothyroidism in the United States, and um, the, the antibody reacts to the thyroid and causing hypothyroidism. Um, up until very recently, I think most people would just kind of go to the doctor's office because they get, they're tired, their, their hair's falling, they get diagnosed with hypothyroidism, and that's it. They, they get put on thyroid medicine, they're like, okay, well, there's not much you can do about it, just be on thyroid medicine, right? Um, you know, and, and you know, I used to think that like that too. Until I, got, until I dug a little deeper. And turns out, um, there's antibodies that are, that are developed as we eat certain foods. Uh, for a lot of people, it's gluten. 
and they develop the antibodies towards that gluten in their gut, and that antibody towards gluten uh, recognizes um, uh, thyroid falsely as something that's foreign, and that causes a cascade of things to happen. So the antibody attacks the thyroid, thinks it's foreign, now the thyroid is damaged. And once the thyroid is damaged, the body attacks the thyroid even more by making more autoimmune antibodies towards the thyroid, and that's how Hashimoto's thyroiditis develops. And so that's why a lot of people are on thyroid supplementation and then thyroid medicine. And um, thyroid medicine is probably, I would say, my number one prescribed medication in my practice, and I'm sure in, in all my colleagues' practices as well. So that's just an example of autoimmunity and, and what we can do. But further beyond thyroid and further beyond uh, diseases like uh, Sjogren's or diseases like lupus, or uh, someone commented here that they have Bichette's disease, further even beyond that, our, auto, our immune system is talking to us on a daily basis. It's telling us, and we're, and we're, it's making us feel a certain way. And I think a lot of people kind of go uh, along the day kind of ignoring their fatigue, ignoring everything, uh, the symptoms, because, you know, we think that there's something better that we should be doing, like, you know, going, uh, taking care of someone else. Um, a lot of caregivers have this issue or... Um, other things like taking care of our jobs so we, we don't lose our jobs and we have a lot of stressors that come along the way and we tend to neglect ourselves and and uh, you know and when we tend to neglect ourselves we stop listening to our body now you know I told you earlier that the food particle goes into your colon and then you developed uh, these antibodies towards it well there's a lot of bacteria that's in your colon as well and the bacteria live there happily well they're supposed to live there happily um, they're not happy when there's a lot of inflammation in the gut. The bacteria is there, and um, a lot of the good bacteria can, can, can change. They can die off, and the bad bacteria can take over. So now, not only do you have inflammation in the gut, you have bad bacteria taking over, and that's why a lot of you, when you eat certain things that causes bloating, gas, and constipation, or even diarrhea, that's because the bad bacteria in your gut has started taking over, and this doesn't make you feel very good. And when that happens, the uh, immune system becomes hyperactive. There's even more inflammation in the gut because the bad bacteria is proliferating. And now pretty much anything you eat can cause a lot of inflammation in the gut. And now your body can develop even more antibodies to even more foods that can be toxic to your body. And so it's sort of a perpetual cycle. And, and uh, one of the things is that uh, everybody's different, everybody reacts to food differently, but I would say the most common culprit in the autoimmunity world is probably gluten and dairy. These are, these are the top two. And the top two a lot of physicians will help you eliminate if um, they think there's some sort of autoimmunity going on with you. So, just to let you know uh, what I've been having success in my practice is that those people with autoimmune disease um, and those people with asthma or, or psoriasis or eczema where they have uh, along the hairlines, they start peeling on their hairlines, and that's eczema. Or they have what seems like earwax, which is actually eczema in their ears. And these are, these are actually uh, autoimmune processes that happens to the body. And when people start eliminating food items uh, that may be toxic to them that are causing the autoimmunity, these symptoms start going away. So let me tell you guys about me personally. I've had asthma for as long as I can remember. My worst asthma attack is when I was living in New York, um, just after, just after, uh, just after college. And I was in medical school, and uh, when it's cold, and I had this cold-induced asthma, and I thought it was just the thing that I had to deal with. I was medicated and all these different things. And a few years later, turns out I had a gluten allergy. When I stopped gluten, I stopped having asthma. When I stop gluten, I stop having eczema all around my hairline, and I stop peeling. I used to get rashes all the time on my hands. It was really embarrassing. I had to wear long sleeves all the time, especially during clinic hours. And nowadays, I wear scrubs with short sleeves. I'm proud to show off my arms a little bit, see? And when I quit gluten, um, I stopped having irritable bowel syndrome symptoms, and I was diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome, and I have no issues with that anymore. And then um, it took about six weeks for me to figure that out <laughs> when I stopped. Uh, gluten in my diet, and I actually inadvertently stopped gluten in my diet. Um, that's another story. 
but uh, but that's just one thing and then uh, I realized that there's other things that I'm really sensitive to I'm really sensitive to, to nightshade vegetables which is like paprika and pepper um, and um, and uh, even bell pepper I have an issue with and these things um, are, uh, cause me a lot of harm in my gut and I'm more educated about my body now because I can actually listen to my body and I can I can listen and say hey this is normal for me I'm not supposed to have diarrhea if I'm having stomach grumbling, something I ate is causing it, and I really try to link that association to figure it out. And it's really hard to figure it out if you don't go through elimination challenge. So an elimination challenge is basically you eliminating certain foods to figure out if um, there are certain things that you can improve about your life and about your health. And I have a lot of my patients go through that, and it's absolutely astounding the, the results that they get. So let me share with you a few other stories. So I have a very large fibromyalgia following. Um, I did a talk at a fibromyalgia conference um, a couple years ago. I got a lot of patients out of it, and, uh, and uh, I helped them go through elimination challenges with their diet. And um, I would say about a good 80% of them have some sort of gluten intolerance and gluten sensitivity. And a lot of their fibromyalgia symptoms started slowly resolving, and some quickly resolving, and we're able to get them down. Uh, you know, one person went from 17 medicines down to just one medicine, which is the thyroid medicine that she take, and she was on narcotics for 17 years, um, for for fibromyalgia, for lower back pain, for what the doctors thought was arthritis. She had a hip replacement when actually um, the pain wasn't from the coming from the hip. And this was all autoimmunity uh, due to food insensitivity. And it's not, and for fibromyalgia, it's not something that you can detect in the blood. It's a chronic pain issue. A lot of people who have chronic fatigue syndrome, which are just, they're just tired all the time. A lot of, they've been to a bazillion doctors looking for a lot of answers. Um, but a lot of times the answers are within ourselves. And it's our own autoimmune system, our own autoimmunity, um, you know, having us feel that way. And so a great example is, you ever notice when you get the flu, you just knock down? When you have when you have influenza virus in your body, and uh, you get really, really, really sick and really ill and fatigued, that's actually an autoimmune process. Um, your body builds antibodies towards these viral particles, and it causes a cascade of uh, inflammation of different uh, cytokines, which are chemicals that are released by the body. And these cytokines, especially something called TNF-alpha uh, and interleukin-1, these things cause you to have that really malaise symptom. And these are autoimmune complexes. Now, um, similar antibodies are formed when you're exposed to some other viruses like Epstein-Barr virus. And Epstein-Barr virus is one huge cause of uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, but there's no cure you can do, a cure that uh, is, is available out there. However, there's some things that you can modify in your food by eating clean and by not having a lot of inflammation in your gut, um, a lot of those antibodies are minimized and you actually do well and get out of that chronic fatigue state. And so, um, but it's, I mean, the, the, the autoimmune disease in, in the world is, is becoming more and more rampant. And part of it is because a lot of the processed foods and a lot of the foods that, that, we, that we eat. So, um, and one other thing is that if you are doing an elimination challenge and if you are um, eliminating certain foods, a lot of times you eliminate certain foods, you start feeling better, you have that inflammation in your gut go away, and foods that you were not able to tolerate before, you can reintroduce back and um, you actually don't develop a reaction towards it. And so um, I have a patient who has celiac disease, which is a um, gluten allergy. And, you know, she, um, she went gluten-free for about three years, and then uh, she reintroduced gluten back into her diet and thought that she was mixed diagnosed, she was never had celiac disease, and that she, um, and she felt great even after eating wheat products again until a year later, she went back into the slumps. And that's because when she took away gluten from her gut, um, she, a lot of the, the original inflammatory reaction disappeared in those three years. And then she, you know, got worse and worse again, but, you know, she had to listen to her body again, saying, hey, maybe gluten is not the best for you. So she actually went back to gluten-free, um, and it's been about a couple months, and she's doing really well. She's doing really well. So, you know, there's a lot of um, controversy behind the stuff that I'm talking about um, right now in the medical community, but you can't, uh, you can't, 
deny the fact that a lot of these things are happening and there's not a whole lot of answers from a lot of physicians. And you can't deny the fact that uh, though our world is changing around us and the way that we eat and the way, the way that we consume things are very different and will continue to be different as we find more uh, and different and cheaper ways to produce products that are cheaper. Um, the, the more shortcuts that we tend to take, the, uh, the more autoimmune issues we tend to have for our bodies. Okay, so um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I am going to look through some of the comments because I haven't done so yet. Uh, I'm allergic to peanuts, peanut butter, and now after years, no issues. Um, I wonder what your reaction was in the, in the beginning. Um, if it's some, some people have anaphylactic reactions towards peanuts, which is they actually blow up and they swell and they stop breathing and their throat swells is not a good thing. Um, let's see. Ruth, uh, you have Hashimoto's. Is it common for those of us with this autoimmune disease to become allergic to peanuts, soy, and canola? Uh, if I eat this again, will I retain fluid like crazy? I also swell up as normal. So, Ruth, great question. Um, so glad you brought that up. So, um, people with one autoimmune disease tend to have other autoimmune issues, autoimmune spectrums, like... Um, maybe you have uh, Hashimoto's, some people can tend to have skin rashes, asthma, uh, vitiligo, which is different white areas on their skin, sometimes on their face, and have reactions and allergic reactions to, to legumes like peanuts and soy and canola. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. You can absolutely have uh, issues with these, um, but you have to listen to your body. If you're eating something that's causing swelling, and swelling is a sign of autoimmunity, and if you're having issues um, with these, then it's something that you should probably eliminate from your diet, okay? I hope that answers your question. I'm not sure if it answered your question or not. Uh, Carla, so true. Someone says, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I assure you I do. Uh, thank you, Doc. You're welcome, everybody. Um, let's see. Love this. I love you guys, too. Thanks for listening. Uh, you have hypothyroid. So, I have hypothyroidism. I always felt dizzy, tired, blurry vision. I always feel sleep and weak. So make sure that your thyroid um, is being checked correctly. A lot of physicians just check the TSH with a thyroid stimulating hormone, which basically is a hormone that's secreted um, to stimulate your thyroid. And but uh, that's not enough to know. Um, you have to get levels of free T3 and free T4 to know exactly where you are in terms of your thyroid and whether you need T3 supplementation or T4 supplementation. So it goes far beyond uh, that. So I, I suggest that you have your thyroid looked at again in a deeper level to figure out if you're actually you thyroid. And you thyroid means that you have normal thyroid ranges. But great question. Yeah, three knee replacements didn't work out. Yeah. Is, is that in the same knee, Carla? I hope not. <laughs> Uh, Kathy, Deborah is putting Deborah on my feet. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, issues with diabetes. And diabetes is another whole big topic, and that's sort of a passion of mine. Um, but I'll discuss that a little bit later on. Uh, hello from Perth. Hello, Ria. How are you? Uh, Justin, my buddy Justin is joined. Thank you for listening. Okay, so, and someone has Bechet's disease, which is not a great thing and so um, I hope you guys learned something from this and I'm just sorry I'm just going through I'm just going through um, the comments um, you know when you try to do a food elimination challenge it is very difficult but you actually have to have a uh, uh, a period of complete avoidance of a food uh, some people kind of go gluten free every other day and it doesn't really go like that or some people go peanut free you know, every week, and it actually takes a lot longer than that for your body's gut bacteria to, to, to really heal. Um, let's see. I have stomach issues with acid reflux, bloating. Doctor wants to do surgery to fix the issue with hydro hernia. Um, acid reflux. So acid reflux, um, Felita, there's an actually acid reflux video if you get out of my live feed uh, for one of the previous feeds about GERD that my buddy Dr. Oob um, discussed very nicely. He put that very nicely. Hello from Cyprus. Hello. Um, so, anyways, um, 
I got to take off, but uh, thank you guys for listening. I um, really appreciate it. Just sitting here on the couch um, in my, with my, uh, my living room. And uh, the holidays are coming, and I hope everybody stays safe. Um, and I hope everybody stays inspired these holiday seasons to be the best person you can be and try to help everybody else too. So this is a season for volunteering as well. So if you guys can donate um, any of your time or your clothes or your food to those who are less fortunate, please do so. Uh, my family and I will be doing our own little uh, volunteering, and uh, it's it's going to be really rewarding. Uh, I have a one-year-old and a two-year-old daughter, and so um, I'm going to make sure that they grow up uh, appreciating the things that we do have and uh, appreciating other people as well. So thanks a lot, everybody.